Hey, this is another great video by Ricky Kennerly Cichlids. In this video, we're looking at how to improve the water quality of your front toes of cichlids. There are many ways that people think about improving their water quality of their front toes. Mostly it has to do with filtration. And there's also the, the factor of water changes, how often you do them, how big. In this instance, we're looking at something that should be looked at more closely throughout the hobby. How you feed your front toes of cichlids. How you feed your fish. How you feed your other cichlids. The other, other fish you have, even if you have guppies. How you feed your fish is so important and the water quality in your aquarium. Now, the next time you feed your fish, I want you to notice when the fish eat get it in their mouth, how much food comes out the gills. Uh, that's going to waste. Most likely, the fish are not going to, you know, get the minute particles that come out their gills. That's going to go into your substrate or your filter. It's going to build up. When it builds up, that waste is not, it's not getting taken out of your aquarium. Yes, you can't see it in the water. But as far as the quality, the water is going through that filter and hitting all that excess food. So I'm going to be talking about that in this video. So stay tuned for some important aspects of how to improve your water quality for your frontosa cichlids. So we're getting on to the feeding of the frontosa cichlids. How important it is for the water quality in general besides filtration because the water quality of any aquarium has to do with how much waste is going into the aquarium. So I want you to notice anytime you feed your fish in the next few days or even in the next few minutes when you put the food in there look how much fish food is coming out the gills and is going into the waste of your aquarium. Sure it could be sucked up into a filtration system but it's still bringing down the water quality of your aquarium because it's still in the system. So if you have less of that food uh, put into the system of the water, the better. And when you feed these front toes of cichlids shrimp, krill, or even artificial crab meat, which I'm going to show you here in a little bit, uh, there's going to be you know, very little, if any, waste come out of their gills. It's all going to go to their belly and digest. And most of that is readily digested and comes out very much with little to less waste. Now you may have noticed that when you eat something that is not too nutritious you have a bigger bowel movement than normal. So these guys are going to have less bowel movements as far as not less amount but the amount of, of bowel movement that comes out is not going to be as big because their food is easily digestible and nutritious. That's important for this water quality of your front toes and cichlids. Now when you're looking at the front toes, you may think, hey, I feed those guys pellet food. Well, in nature, they're predators. They eat fish. And sometimes when they eat fish, you know, like sharks and so forth, all the predator fish, they'll take a while to digest that food because it's high in protein. Protein takes higher amount of time to digest. So in this instance, I'm only feeding my front toes of cichlids, the artificial crab meat, uh, once a day. Uh, and uh, I skip the next day. So once every other day am I feeding them. And they're doing great. Uh, the, their body language as far as how they're reacting to the fish, they're, they're less stressed, they're showing more blues. And the tint of the water is so much improved. Now this may not take, you know, effect instantly, but as you do your, your routine water changes and you're getting all the pellet excess food out of your substrate, which you can't always get it all out in one huge water change. So this will be a process. It may take a, a few weeks. But you want to see a dramatic increase in the clarity of your water and how your fish are reacting as far as their growth their coloration 
So I'm going to get into this a little bit more and show you how they readily eat this crab meat. So stay tuned for this. This is the how to improve the water quality for frontosis. It's very important. Very important. So before I actually do some of the feeding of these frontoses, I'm going to give you a good little view of them and tell you a little bit about the frontoses I have in here, uh, like I do for most of my videos, uh, so you can get an idea of what they look like. Because right here you can barely see them, especially if you're looking at them on a phone. So I'm going to get some close-ups that you look at them, because when I feed them, uh, that's the finale. You're going to see them just go crazy for the food. Uh, so let's get a little bit of some close-ups on these guys. So here you actually see my alpha male, uh, and then you also see uh, Changer over here on the left. That's Changer. Uh, she's what I consider a black widow frontosis. Now other countries have a different description of a black widow, but she has a web pattern on both sides, so I consider her a black widow. Now, if you look. There's the second, that's the subdominant male for the frontosis. I have caves here for those who get a little bit timid. I want to have some territories. Uh, but I have it open in the middle here. Uh, and then I get to see my frontosis more. So if having the caves in the center, I like to see my frontosis in the middle. Now, of course, you might have seen my cave over here for the alpha male. It's a ra rather large pot that's been cut in half. Uh, he likes it pretty well. He also comes out a lot. Right now, I've been right next to the aquarium and videoing, so he's not right out right now at this moment. Now, look at the coloration now of the front toes. I want you to notice the coloration when I start to feed these front toes. I'm about to go get the food. You see there one over on the right. It's starting to blue up a little bit. Here comes the alpha male coming out showing his glory. Look at the blues come out of him. It's looking really, really good. So, let's go to the actual feeding of the front toes. Now, remember, after a few weeks of feeding your fish, either shrimp or krill or artificial crab and give it a few weeks and then start looking at the tint of your water the best way to look at the tint of your water is take a bucket a white bucket get the water in your white bucket and see the tint and if it's more yellow you know I'm gonna there's a lot more organics in there your ammonia nitrite nitrate may be just fine as far as your testing but the coloration of your water can be a little bit of yellow and if you don't take a notice of this it can happen gradually and things that happen gradually you may not notice as well so take a look at your tents of your water also you can if you look from your the long ways of your aquarium from the side you can also see the tents of your water so let me go get that food and I want you to show you the amazing experience of feeding these guys artificial crab meat there's the alpha male again looking really sweet so let me show you the actual package of the artificial crab meat Class, let me get a focus on it pretty inexpensive when you consider that you can pay thirty dollars for a food that only have eight ounces of pellet food in it and all that waste is coming out their gills so let me give you the description of the ingredients in this stuff okay it's got uh, Alaska Pollock King Crab let me read it back over here. It's got Alaska Pollock, which if you start the ingredient list first, is actually the most uh, what's in the actual crab meat, which is Pollock is a fish, and I guess it would be from Alaska since it's Alaska Pollock. It's got anchovies. Anchovies is good for pizza and also for fish because it is a fish. And it's got sardines, blue crab, king crab, lobster, snow crab and soy so that's really good uh, it does have some uh, paprika in it which could be good for it has to give it a little red color which paprika is good 
it's nothing that's gonna die or anything uh, it's got a little bit of fat but it's pretty well it's good stuff it's pre-cooked you don't have to thaw it out like you do a uh, shrimp or a krill uh, does great and, uh, and it will last a long time in your refrigerator and you can probably buy it at different places around the world I get a lot of viewers from around the world so look at the ingredient list from wherever you're at because the what kind you have can be different so see Whopper there and you'll get a good you'll probably be the one of the first ones to buy I uh, bought into this food me gradually take it to the top and that's where we'll be looking at it now you can cut this up and look just peel it off in little chunks like this uh, and put it in now let them see it and go for it boom so I put it in there slowly I don't put it in there all at once because when these guys scoop it up in their mouth I don't know who is eating and who hasn't so I feed them to them slowly let them get their chunks out that way I don't put too, you know excess food in there now Whopper the male he always gets more mouth than the other ones so he's already had three chunks and sometimes uh, he'll actually put more in his you know mouth than he can put in his belly and you'll have to put spit some back out and then he'll eat it later uh, normally the other smaller frontoses in here only eat one chunk Let's see whopper he's being a hog let me put it in there a little bit faster so get more of them going at it at once and you look at the screen here to make sure you're actually seeing it oh you're actually not uh, so let me get it going again they're, normally they were eating it at the top of the water but now they're getting it down when it's going down to the bottom Yeah, now you're getting a good look at it. I didn't look at the screen, so I apologize for not having it correct at first. But they're just really going for it. Let me give them a moment to eat what they have left. Let me move the camera down just a little bit there. Eating that stuff up. Now you can do it in strips or you can do it in little chunks. Now the strips, they have to tear into it because they can't put a whole strip in their mouth. Uh, the chunks are fine and uh, they get into it and once they put a bunch in their mouth they'll act like they're more hungry and still go after food so you have to be kind of careful how much you put in there uh, it's sort of like a holding frontosa that will mimic eating a knot so look at these guys are just scooping it up So this will actually improve your water quality with what you're feeding them there. Uh, they really like it and you only have to feed them once every other day. And their growth rate and water quality will improve. Thanks again for watching and Ricky Kennerly Cichlids where fish swim.